Welcome to Cardiff University Open Day and in particular welcome to the uh, midwifery programme, the introduction to the midwifery programme and indeed um, uh, to the WHO designated year of midwifery and nursing. Um, this introductory talk uh, we thought would help you in making what um, is uh, certainly under normal circumstances a very, uh, some very difficult decisions but probably even more so in these challenging times that we find ourselves in now. We are hoping that we can help you make those choices just that a little bit easier. So we've done a, um, a, a series of slides for you uh, to cover and to recap on what is a midwife. Um, midwifery at Cardiff University, our programme, the midwifery programme, your placement learning opportunities and how to apply should you wish to and of course we hope that you do. So to start off with what are midwife or what is a midwife? Well midwives are specialists in normal pregnancy and birth and the early postnatal period and in so uh, providing that expert care they are providing safe evidence-based uh, advice care and support in a holistic manner they are the lead carer for women um, without any complications in terms of childbirth um, however they also coordinate the care for all women in conjunction with um, specialist services such as the obstetricians they provide much information for the mum and, the, and their families and in so doing they help them make decisions about the care and services that those mums might want um, and of course they contribute hugely to the public health agenda. As a midwife you will work at the heart of the community. You will be responsible for creating and sustaining a positive relationship with pregnant women and help her have that best possible birth experience. You can work in different areas, you can be hospital based, you can be community, community based, um, you could specialise in different areas such as public health, sexual health and perinatal mental health. So it's a very varied career choice. Listen to what the RCM says here. Um, uh, they've just got a short clip on their Twitter feed and it's just really heartwarming to hear what people say, what it means to them to be a midwife. We put up a few things here about the values and the attributes that it takes to be a midwife and um, uh, I, I think one of the biggest things that come out of there for me is to be a communicator. You, you partner with women, you respect what they, um, uh, what they, they have to say. Um, you can be open and adaptable. You can, be, you can help them solve the problems um, that they have. Um, so it's about respecting people and what, and what situations that they are in. We put this in just to sort of, you know, remind you about that uh, diverse career um, uh, uh, choice that midwives have. And the RCM have been looking at this and they put out some, um, a, a new career framework. And they looked at four different areas of, of um, uh, career for a midwife. Practice being the obvious one, but then there's research, there's management and there's education. Um, leadership dovetails through them all but certainly on registration and that'll be the thing that will um, uh, be first in your mind at the moment um, uh, you can from there flow into the community and the hospital and from there on in start to take up your specialist posts so our midwifery programme sits in the School of Healthcare Sciences. It's one of nine programmes along with those other um, nursing programmes and those programmes uh, for professions are light to medicine. Um, we've certainly had very good um, uh, recognition in terms of our teaching and the, our research. But interestingly, as a health Health, uh, school of Healthcare Sciences is that that really opens up opportunities 
for us to do multidisciplinary um, education. And that's something really exciting because in reality, when you are in the clinical area, you aren't working alone. You are working with a whole um, a range of professionals um, as a team. We are the only designated World Health Organization collaborating centre for midwifery development. Um, we are the only one in the UK. Um, there is one other in Chile, um, but there's only two worldwide. And this is something that you can't, um, you can't apply to do. This is something that you are requested to do. And so we are really proud and very honoured that the World Health, World Health Organization asked, to do, uh, asked if we'd like to be part of that. We've been part of that now for about four or five years and it's a, it's a real, uh, it's, it's such a bonus to be working on international, um, uh, international projects and to be strengthening, sharing skills and strengthening um, the nursing and midwifery workforce across Europe in order that uh, we can improve the care for women and their babies. That's um, in Cardiff University led by Professor Billy Hunter and um, she's just lovely and she's done so much work um, uh, with the WHO. Um, and this is the team and Billy Hunter, uh, Dr uh, Billy Hunter is there um, in the, the red jacket in the top one um, and she's at the centre down the bottom there and um, she's very much part of our team but uh, is also um, uh, very much into research and, and keeps us on the straight and narrow in terms of collecting that evidence base. We're also very fortunate that we have one other professor, Professor Julia Sanders, and uh, currently Julia is leading a nationwide, a UK-wide um, uh, research project looking at water birth and the outcomes of water birth. We've also got a reader in midwifery, um, our lead midwife for education, Grace Thomas, and we are fairly unique in that we have core programme staff, staff that have dual roles in clinical and academic roles, and associate lecturer positions where they're developing into the role of, a, um, of an educationalist, and um, they're taking those things back into the clinical area. So we're very blessed to have a very sound award-winning team. The programme itself is, of course, um, uh, accredited by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. It's three years full-time, um, 45 weeks of planned educational activity each year. So it's not an easy course, but you do come out with a, um, a, a, an academic qualification as well as a... Um, uh, professional qualification. Over the three years, and mostly each year actually, um, the, the years are split into 50% theory and 50% in clinical practice. And so it's a real dovetailing, it's a real application of theory into that clinical area and you continue to learn about those skills and that knowledge base in an, in a, an applied form. Um, the placements themselves cover across two main health boards, uh, that's the Naira and Bevan and Cardiff and Vale, and we can have a little look at those in a while. So the three-year plan, and most programmes have a three-year plan, and, and um, we certainly um, uh, organise things um, in this way. We emphasise the learning initially and the practice on normality and uh, normal midwifery care for mothers and babies. You get that base um, of practice um, there. And once that's embedded in a little, then we can move in year two to emphasise complex care and specialist placements, looking a little bit more broadly at things. And you can see there some of our specialist placements are neonatal unit, accident and emergency, and gynaecology. Polar placement is a, a, a placement overseas learning opportunity, which I will talk about um, uh, there to broaden um, uh, your knowledge. And then in year three, building on things again, um, uh, we can um, think about a little bit more consolidation, just looking at the time here, um, case holding and management. 
and um, there you are looking at more complex situations but looking at managing things a little bit more ready for that that final bit when you qualify when you register as a midwife we thought long and hard about the assessments throughout the three-year program and here we didn't want to disadvantage any particular student and everybody's got um, uh, their own particular um, favorites in terms of in terms of learning and teaching and so we've put together a very wide assessment strategy there's group presentations, there's poster development, there's, there's presentations in themselves, um, individual presentations. Um, and then, of course, later on in the programme, you've got dissertations um, and uh, research assessments. However, the programme isn't only about academic qualifications and academic capabilities. It has to be a blend of... Oh, it has to be a blend of um, a academic and a clinical assessment um, and so for that we use an electronic um, a, a software program called my progress um, and that enables us to effectively um, uh, for you to enter your evidence and us to monitor your evidence this slide is just a little bit about the innovative and dynamic teaching um, uh, that, that, is, um, that is undertaken. We base that on a spiral curriculum. Um, it is a student-centred approach to teaching and learning. Um, and there's a whole host of ways that we do that. Face-to-face -face and keynote lecturers, lectures, um, a simulation um, and a, a learning in practice, of course. So... Going through on that, simulation being one of the bigger areas, uh, we, we have our own um, uh, simulation suite for the health, uh, School of Healthcare Studies and within that we have a, an area which is dedicated to midwifery um, and certainly we have um, the essential equipment needed where you can learn in a protected environment. Um, uh, some of it is a lot more expensive and we can use that, such as Sim Newbie and Sim Mum. We do have a state-of-the-art um, sort of camera technology there within this and we can, um, if we need to, we can record things, we can play back and we can do learning together. In terms of the learning opportunities going abroad, um, the, uh, certainly the aim of the university is to um, try and uh, facilitate our undergraduate, stu graduate, undergraduate students to have this opportunity. Um, and um, what they say, what our students say, is that this sort of learning experience is absolutely life-changing. Um, it's a strengthening of, of themselves, a strengthening of their resilience and emotional intelligence. And so for that reason, we very much support this in the Middle Free Programme. You have four weeks which are part of the programme where we can help you to um, arrange things to go abroad. But if you can't go abroad, then we'll do specialist areas within Wales, within the UK. Um, and certainly there is uh, an equally valued uh, benefit from that. This is just some of the, um, uh, the areas that we partner with. And these are some of our students over on the left-hand side. Um, this was last year. One of our partner uh, countries is Namibia. And uh, some of our students did go out there for their experience. And the ones down the bottom um, are ones that went over to Sweden, one of the Scandinavian countries. So they were thrilled with their placement. And over on the right-hand side, you've got your um, uh, students that are learning through social interaction. And uh, our students over in Fiji the year before. So this is a little bit about our placement areas. You can see there, there's a very large placement area, Cardiff and Vale, London, and Iron, Bevan. And what we do say is that we will get you to go to all different units within that placement area. We don't keep it to one unit. Um, and that way, you really will benefit from um, caring for and having experience of working with people 
from all different cultures. Um, uh, that will be obviously your, uh, uh, your deprived areas, your affluent areas, those asylum seekers. Um, and you know, it's so diverse, your valley areas, your rural areas, um, that at the end of three years you come out a much more rounded practitioner. It's just a little bit about Anaira and Bevan Health Board there, and indeed about Cardiff and Vale um, Health Board. Both are very large health boards, around about five and a half to six and a half thousand deliveries per year. Both of them have midwifery-led units and um, high-risk units, obstetric-led units, um, and um, they have special care baby units and fetal medicine units. So you will get a really broad range of things. So um, applying through the application process, of course, it's UCAS. Um, and just to let you know, really, that all applications that come in, and we get about 800 applications per year, um, uh, all applications are screened initially for academic qualifications or predictive qualifications and then um, we then look at every single personal statement and we score that personal statement and we invite the highest scoring applicants in for interview. They are usually in uh, between January and March and they take the form of multiple mini interviews. And as per UCAS cycle, offers are made by the end of March and confirmed by August. This is typical um, academic requirements. Uh, the A-level offer there is an ABB uh, for a BTEC DDD. But please go to the website and have a really good look at that. I've just put some of the more um, usual ones on there. And um, in addition, obviously, to the academic requirements, we must have a DBS check and occupational health assessment. And you need to have all your necessary vaccinations to um, protect yourself and the general public. These are some of the personal requirements, motivation, um, a commitment to the midwifery profession and understanding of the midwifery profession. These are the sorts of things that we'd really like to see on your UCAS form. Um, you know, that you can understand what the demands of the programme are. What is it like to be caring for people? Is this something that you really know about and you really want to do? This is just a little bit about the uh, MMI day, uh, saying about the introduction um, um, and the group interview and then your individual interviews um, uh, from there. So you can have a little look at that. And again, I've said a little bit already, um, we follow that UCAS um, cycle so that uh, offers are made by the 31st of March. You have until the beginning of May to make up your mind whether or not you want to come, um, uh, want to take up that offer. Um, and then, of course, final offers being made in uh, August. So, last couple of slides, I just want you to have a little think about why you should come to Cardiff University to study midwifery. Um, and three of the top uh, bits that I picked out there would be, one, just please go and look at our national student survey results. Um, they are excellent over the last five years or so, and even before then, obviously. Um, and certainly over the last two years, we've had 100% overall satisfaction. We do have a high number of first class honours, which is in keeping with the Russell Group University. Um, and the students really have um, a, you know, a good time. Um, and I think that that's testament to the low attrition rate that we get. This is what they say. You can have a little look. I'm not going to read all of these, but um, you can see there um, the smaller one. Placements are fantastic. University lecturers are very approachable and fantastic at their job. And of course, this is um, an independent survey run by Ipsa Moy. It isn't anything to do with Cardiff University. So um, if you do study at Cardiff University, you can consider the Wales Healthcare Student Funding Arrangements. And that has been very advantageous for the students over the last few years. Um, education is our speciality, um, uh, as testament, you know, by the fact that we are the only collaborating centre uh, for the um, World Health Organisation. 
um, for the development of midwifery. And we are a really dynamic and innovative teaching team. But more than that, you know, we really want you to be the best midwife that you can. Um, and um, that is something that we passionately believe in. Now that midwives play, play this vital role in supporting and preparing women for um, uh, the birth of a new life. This is Alice Gower, one of our students. She is left now, um, but she does say, you know, the course is challenging academically and clinically, but there is a support system in place. Um, and being a student midwife, she has had the most rewarding time. Um, she's met some awesome people, she says, who are now her best friends and she can't wait to get to, her, uh, to start her new career as a, as a midwife. So, um, a couple of key points here. Um, please do think about when you want to start your programme. Um, the, the holidays are pre-planned, you can't change them. Um, we need to think you, get you to think about transport. Can you get there? Can you get back to this placement areas? Certainly not everybody has a car. The shift pattern. Um, think about what other commitments that you've got because the shift patterns, nights and on calls can be difficult um, and they start right at the beginning of the programme. And then, of course, think about finances. Um, you know, it is a difficult time in terms of finances and there are many competing demands um, for whatever funds you've got. So just think, is this the right time for you to start a midwifery programme? Um, any queries, please get back to the selection admissions team. Um, there, put their number um, and you can also look on the school website. And that's one of our students here, um, and I think, you know, uh, she's so intent on what she's doing. It's just lovely to see her there concentrating hard, learning. So, um, I think for me, it's, um, thank you for listening to Evan Wild Young, um, and um, I do hope that you found this little talk um, interesting. Thank you very much.